Hi and welcome to this three-part solid works tutorial series for a wooden cottage doll's house. In part one and two of this tutorial we will create the main structure of the doll's house as a part file. In part three we will export the doll's house solid bodies as individual parts ready for an assembly. The parts will also have decals and appearances added to them which will be downloadable. The doll's house we are creating doesn't have any screws or dowels, it is held together by slotted panels or glue. This is preferred in the toy industry for safety, costs and assembly time. So let's get started. Begin with a new part and starting with the base panel, start a sketch onto the top plane. Use the centre rectangle and going from the centre axis, draw a 300 by 533mm rectangle. Deleting the inner construction lines, use sketch fillet and fill at the four corners by 10mm. Next, add a centre line through the centre of the rectangle and turn on dynamic mirror entities and select the line. Then with the centre line again, find the corner of the rectangle using the SolidWorks Smart Guides and draw a line down by 24mm and in by 15mm. Use these guides and draw a corner rectangle from this point. This should be 224mm by 9mm. These slots will be for the doll's house side panels. For the back panel slot, turn off dynamic mirror entities and draw a new centre line guide down the centre by 9mm. Then take the mid line and from the guide, draw a horizontal line at 150mm and turn it into a 4mm rectangle like this. From here, extrude the sketch by 9mm. Moving on to the right side panel, start a new sketch onto the inner side of the slot. View from the side and turn on wire view with hidden lines visible, as you will need to see where the slot is. Starting from this side of the slot, trace the edges down by 9, cross by 224 and up by 9mm and across the edge by 20mm. Carry on the sketch going vertically up by 259mm, in by 10mm, up by 9, out by 22, then up again by 2mm. This little cut out here will act as a slot for the first floor panel to hold on to. Going back to the start of the sketch, draw another line along the edge by 20mm and up by 270mm. Then to find the centre point of the panel for the roof slope, draw a centre line joining up both points. Draw a centre line from the centre of this guide by 200mm and use the line to join up and close the sketch to look like this. To hold the roof panels in place, I need to add tabs to the roof slopes. Using the three point centre rectangle, start from the centre of the line and on this side draw a rectangle 55mm by 22 do the same for the other side, only this time make the rectangle 12mm wide instead. The reason for this is so that the back tab will be able to hold both roof panels while it is being played with. Use trim entities to cut away any inner entities of the rectangles. Then take sketch chamfer and add a 3mm chamfer to the corners of the tabs and use sketch fillet to fill at the sharp point by 3mm. To add some windows to the panel, use the centre line to draw a guide from the starting point starting from the bottom of the base level with the right panel side, draw a 177.5mm line up and 80.5mm line in. Then use the corner rectangle to draw a 60 by 24 mil rectangle down from the point. This will be the first window. Then select in the linear sketch pattern tool, select the rectangle with the pattern going along the x-axis, change the spacing dimension to 34mm so that there's a 10mm gap between each window, and change the instances to 3. Now I can extrude this panel by 9mm ensuring that it's going the right way within the base slot and untick and merge result to keep it as a separate body. To do the left side panel quickly, sketch onto the inner slot face here and start a new sketch. Instead of drawing the panel out again, just select the outer face of the right side panel and select convert entities. I don't want any windows on this side so I can just extrude the sketch by 9mm, again unmerging it. Moving onto the back panel, start a sketch onto the back face of the back panel slot here and turn on the hidden line to view again. Using the line, start from the corner of the slot and trace up by 9mm, then go along the base panel edge by 97mm, centre to the left panel's extrusion. Then go up by 275mm, then straight across to the middle of the other side panel at 494mm. Close up the sketch by going down the base, across by 97mm, up to the start of the slot, down by 9mm and back to the starting point. That is the back panel's profile. To add some windows to this, draw a guide centre line from here, 
up by 177.5 mil so that it's level with the side panel windows, then in by 96.5 mil. Like before, draw a corner rectangle from here at 60 by 24 mil. Use the linear pattern to add two more instances at 34 mil apart. Before I can close this sketch, I need to add some slots to the top of this to hold in the first floor panel. Using the center line, draw a 7 mil guide down from the center of the sketch here. Use the line and turn on dynamic mirror entities. From here, draw another guide with the center line from the bottom of the point here, horizontally out by 70 mil. Then take the corner rectangle and draw a 9 by 100 mil rectangle. Extrude the panel by 4 mil, unmerging the result and ensure that it's extruding inwards and OK the feature. Next I need to create a groove slotting feature to the side panels so that the back panel can just drop in between them. To do this quickly, start a sketch on the top face of the back panel here and convert the face entities. Use Cut Extrude and cut up from the bottom edge of the side panel above the base like this. Then for direction 2, change this to through all. Under feature scope, ensure that the feature only cuts through the side panels and OK it. It should look like this. For the first full panel, start a new sketch onto the slot face here. View the model from the top and turn on hidden lines visible. Use the line and draw from the inner corner of the back panel down by 245mm, then out by 4.5mm up to the panel's edge, then back along the edge by 10mm, out by 10.5mm and down by 38 Carry on this sketch 524mm to the other side and repeat the same sketch on this side and go back up to the bottom corner of the back panel then trace the back panel sketching into the slots up by 4mm across by 100mm and back down to the edge now for this panel I'm going to add a slot for the house's middle panel this will act as a divider for rooms so continue the sketch across by 27mm then go down by 150mm in by 9 and back up to the edge Trace back along the back panel by 104mm up to the next slot and then trace around that, draining it back up to the corner point of the sketch to close it. Fill it these four corners by 8mm. Extrude the sketch by 9mm to create the panel, or merging the result. It should look like this and look like it is slotted into the back panel. Like before, I need to cut away some material from the side panels to allow the first floor panel to slide in between the sides and slot into the back panel. To do this, hide the first floor panel and start a new sketch onto the side panel's inner slot face here. Use the corner rectangle and sketch a rectangle within the slot face from the bottom point of the side panel to the other side panel like this. Use this sketch to cut extrude up to the vertex selecting the top front point of the back panel here. Under feature scope, ensure only the side panels are selected and OK it. And then unhide the first floor panel. Next is the middle panel. This acts as a divider for the rooms, but also more support for the centre of the house. This piece will slot into the first floor panel before the back panel goes on. Start the sketch for this on the inner slot face here and view the house from the right side. Remember to turn on hidden lines visible to make it easier to draw the panel. Use the line tool to trace down the panel from below this slot to the base panel. From here I'm going to add some slotting tabs that will go into the baseboard. Continue the sketch going along the edge by 10mm, down by 9 along the base panel's bottom edge by 20mm, then back up by 9 across by 10 and go up by 200mm cross by 175mm to create a doorway in the panel and go back down to the edge. Create the same size tab on the other side going 10 by 9, 20, up 9mm and along by 10 and vertically up until you hit the sloped edge of the side panel. Carry on the sketch along the sloped edge by approximately 170mm. Then go back to the other side with the line and go along the slotted edge by 105mm up to the slot in the first floor panel, then up by 9mm and back along the panel's edge by 50mm. 
hover over the other sloped roof edge on the side panel until guides appear and draw the line parallel up to the other side. You will need to trim away the excess line here. We're going to add a little more detail to the middle panel by creating a beams effect seen in cottages. To do this I'm going to add a sketch chamfer to these two corners at 40mm. Extrude the panel by 9mm, ensuring all contours are selected so that it extrudes as a whole piece and again it should be unmerged. Sketching onto the front face of the middle panel, view from the side with hidden lines visible. Trace over the outer edge across the top and back down. Use the centre line and draw along the chamfered edge up to the outer lines. Use the line and do the same on the other side starting from here up to the top edge ensuring you're along the chamfer edge. You can then delete the guide and do the same to the other side to look like this. Selecting all the sketch use offset entities and change the offset dimension to 18mm. Check the bi-directional box so that the offset goes both ways like this. And from this sketch, I only want these two segments. So select the whole sketch and convert it to construction lines. Trace over the two triangle segments with the line tool and use the sketch fillet to fill it all the edges by 3mm. You can then cut extrude the sketch through the middle panel. This should create the wooden beam effect. The next part to do is a block to hold magnets. The magnets are needed for the doors later to stop them just freely swinging open. Sketching onto the side face of the mid panel, draw a corner rectangle 30mm by 20mm and use move entities to place it along the panel edge from the midpoint to the middle of the edge. Copy and paste the sketch and do the same on the other side. Extrude the sketch by 2mm and then 20mm in direction 2. Ensure that it is unmerged and okay. Then join up the two blocks sketching onto the inner block face with a 30 by 11 mil rectangle. Extrude it by 9 mil and merge the two blocks together. To get it to slot onto the mid panel, sketch onto the mid panel and draw a rectangle from the middle of the block to the edge here. And cut extrude it by 9 mil ensuring that it only cuts through the mid panel under feature scope. To add the appearance of magnets quickly, start a new sketch onto the front of the block and draw a centre line down the middle of it and use it as the line to mirror about for dynamic mirror entities. Use the centre line again and draw from the centre of the edge by 12.25mm. Use the end of this line to draw a 10mm circle onto it. Then use cut extrude, select thin feature, change the thickness to 0.1mm. Direction 1 should be on 6mm. This will give the impression of magnets. Finally, for the mid panel to slot into the base, start a sketch onto the bottom of the base panel and select the bottom face loops of the mid panel tabs and convert the entities like this. Do it for both tabs and cut extrude them 9mm out of the base panel only. With all of these parts done, I'm going to end part one of the tutorial here. Stay tuned for parts two and three. Thanks for watching.